strong. Hello everyone and welcome back to another deck profile. Today is going to be my deck profile, more like an updated deck profile of my Malnar, uh, the Rat Empire deck profile. Now I love Malnar, he is my favourite Rat Commander of all time, he's just really really good. Um, I've play, been playing Rat since, what, late? No, it may have been early 20, very early 2018, I would, just, I would say. And through the years, I've been getting cards, bear cards to upgrade the deck. I've been taking out old strategies for new strategies. But this strategy, this deck, is all revolved around Rat Colony. The Rat that allows you to have an, any number of them in the deck. Which is cool because in Commander, you can only want one copy of the card. There's only a few cards in the game that says you can have multiple copies of it. And rats have two, being Lancer's rats, which is a 2 2, which I'm pretty sure it's a 2 2. That actually, I have. Do I have one right here? I do! I have one right here. Yeah, a 2 2 rat, which for Lancer's rats gets plus one plus one for each other creature on the battlefield named Lancer's rats. A deck can have any number of cards named Lenter's Rats. And while Rat Colony is a 2-1 that gets a, a plus one plus zero for each other rat on the battlefield. So it doesn't do its defense. It's also two cost while Relentless Rat is a free cost. So I think we'll stick with Rat Colony. So we get to the deck. So as you can see uh, I have the wonderful Secret Lair Marrow because I decide if I'm going to run him, it took me a few years to save up to get him because he isn't cheap. I think I bought him for like thirty pound. But hey, gosh, gosh, splash out those rats! So for those who don't know who Malnar is, um, it is a five drop two three that gives all rats uh, fear, which means they can only be blocked by black creatures and artifact creatures. You can tap him. Sack a rat to create a 1-1 one, one black rat. Uh, yeah, X 1-1 one, one black rats, where X is the number of rats you control. So I've got four rats, including Marrow. I'll sack one rat. I have three rats, so now I'll create three 1-1 one, one black rats. The deck, this is like rat swarm, pretty much. They're rats that are supposed to swarm. But, yeah. Like, I've, I've always enjoyed this deck. Um, none of, I will say, none of the cards in this deck are from the Wild or Eldraine set. I don't think any of them is. I do have another, another build of rats I want to, I want to do, uh, soon. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It also involves red. So, I'm excited to do that one. So, let's get to the deck. Like, like I was saying earlier, I am running Rat Colony to be suffice 27 Rat Colonies, which is a fat stack because I've run 34 creatures and 27 of them are just one guy. But yeah, Rat Colony is a 2 drop, 2 1, with Rat Colony gets a plus one plus one for each other rats, uh, plus one plus zero for each other rats you control. A deck can have any number of cards named with Rat Colony. So, yeah. Pretty simple. It's basically uh, Rat Colony get there. Like, you can run any number, like if you want to run uh, like 30, or if you just want to run like 34 lands and the rest of them could be these, you can could I wouldn't recommend it but you could or just a deck just filled with two lands and like 97 of these you could but that's too dumb that is way too dumb for the other creatures we have a pack rat which pack rats power top is equal to the number of rats you control uh, you may pay three mana discard a card to create a token copy of pack rat 
Yeah. So effectively just gaining more and more copies of pack rats, which means these will also get bigger and these will get bigger too. Um, I initially did not have this card in the deck, but I really, really like him. He is, I think he's one of the cooler rats in the deck. We have Rave of Rats. He has a 4 drop trample with 4 2. He also has Blitz. If you don't know what Blitz is, if you can pay the card for its Blitz cost, for this, for example, is Blitz 5. So you pay 5. It enters the battlefield, it gains haste. You do sacrifice at the beginning of the end step, but when it dies, you get to draw a card. Uh, and what's really cool about Wave of Rats is if Wave of Rats dies and it dealt damage to a player, you may return it to the battlefield. Now this is, this is really good, especially with Malnar, which means if you do not want to tap him first, what you can do is you can uh, smack. If this doesn't die, great. Uh, but then you can like tap. I'll sack this. And I'll create, at the moment, two 1-1 uh, one, one black rats. And then you end your turn. I'm sorry, uh, as soon as it dies, uh, it kind of, this all resolves, this resolves, and then it returns to the battlefield. Because it dealt damage. That is what I really like about this card. I think, like, it's one of the best kind of rats, one of the best rats in the deck. It's also incredibly cheap. Uh, then we have Ash Coat of the Shadow Swarm, a card that only got printed in Jumpstart 22. This card goes for, I think, under 30, I think? Under 30, maybe? But whenever Ash Coat of the Shadow Swarm attacks or blocks, other rats you control get plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of rats you control. Now, if I've got like 27 of these on board, whoa, every one of my rats are gaining uh, plus <laughs> 27. 27. It's also really nice that uh, during your end phase you may mill four cards, uh, then return up to two rats from your bin to your hand. So it allows you to just dig for, well just mill so you can dig for some more rats. You don't have to worry about if like your, your guys die because you can just bring them back to your hand to cast them again. Especially since rat colony, I just dropped a rat colony. Especially since like they're only like two drops, so it's it's fine. The only rat that's like yeah, these two are the biggest rat costs in the deck, like four and four. Now for the non-rats, we have Piper of the Swarm, a really amazing card from the first Eldrain set. This is actually this version is actually the bundle box promo. But yeah. Rats you control have menace, which means they can be, they have to be blocked by two creatures. You may pay a colorless and a black to tap him to create a 1-1 one, one black rat. Then you may pay two colorless, two black, tap him to sacrifice three rats to gain control of target creature. That is a permanent gain control of target creature. It's not to gain control of target creature in turn. You get to keep that guy. Uh, I've only done that like a couple of times uh, because it obviously is a 100 card deck, you're not know, guaranteed that you're always going to see him. But yeah, I like him a lot. I've always had him in my rats, I've never taken him out because he's just that good. Then we have uh, Iora, first of Lockwain. Again, from the first first Eldrain set. Uh, she's really cool. I say that she uh, she got a reprint in March. The machines, I'm pretty sure, as one of the showcase cards. But yeah, whenever she or another black creature enters the battlefield, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. You may tap her, sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. So if you want, you can sacrifice the one more black rat tokens to just draw a card. Like, and since every single every single creature in this deck is black. Uh, it, it even counts tokens because it's just whenever it enters the battlefield, it's not when you cast. So the tokens you make for Malnar will also proc the trigger of Lockwain's effect. Next, we have a species specialist. Pretty simple, enters the battlefield, you could choose a creature type. Of course, we're choosing rats. Whenever a creature of chosen type dies, you draw a card. So whenever I sack a rat for Malnar, 
I get a draw card. Nice. And then for the last creature, we have an Ogre Slumlord. Whenever a non-token creature dies, create a one more black rat. And that's anywhere on the board. Either my board or my opponent's board. Whenever a non-token rat dies, you create a one more black rat. Rats also have death touch, so that, that's also pretty nice. Mm. So that's it for the creatures. 34 creatures. 27 rat colonies. Three, three rats and then four non-rats. And now we get to the artifacts. You know me, I like my artifacts. So, of course it's a commander deck, we're playing a soul ring. And because we're running mono black, I also am running a jet medallion, which black spells cost one cost less. Really, really good, because then all of these cost one black mana. Uh, to help Malinar with untapping and tapping, we're running a Mage White Stone, pay one, untap target creature that has an activated ability with the tap symbol in its cost. Which means I can activate Malinar twice in one turn. A Thousand Year Elixir, which you may activate the abilities of creature you control as though they had haste, which means I can cast Malinar and tap Malinar for his ability at, because this effectively gives him haste. And then I can pay the one tap to untap. So you should be able to get Malinar off a lot in this in this deck. And again, because we're running mono black, we have a Bantu's Monument, which black creature spells cost one cost less. Whenever you cast a creature, uh, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Similar to uh, Iora of Lockwing. And because we're running a tribal deck, Hell Torn, choose a creature type. I'm choosing rats. Uh, rats, creature of the chosen type cost one cost less. As you see, I've got a lot of like cards, like less cards, like this and this. Uh, three cards that kind of makes my creatures cost less because this could effectively only cost me like two black. Uh, beginning upkeep, you may look at the top card of your deck. If it's a creature that shares a creature type, you add it to your hand. Uh, if not, you just put it back. So effectively you can get, like, you can add a card from the top of your deck and then draw a card. For your draw step, which is pretty good. Uh, we have a Whip of Erebos. Pretty simple. Creature like control have lifelink. You can pay two cards, two black, tap, uh, put a creature from the graveyard, uh, from my graveyard. I'm pretty sure it's my graveyard. Yeah, from my graveyard onto the battlefield, gains haste. It does so, sack itself at the beginning of the next end step. So you could get a really, I don't know, I've never really had a reason to use that ability because I only like have, technically I only have like a few creatures because a lot of these are just the same guy over and over again, I have no reason to pay the four. So I usually just have this in for the lifelink. And then we have Vanquish's Banner, simple, choose a creature type and it enters the battlefield, creature total type gets plus one plus one. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, you get to draw a card. So again, cast a rat, draw a card, cast another rat, draw a card, the, the cycle continues. And to help with mana, I've also got a caged sun. So, in the battlefield, choose a colour, so I'm choosing black. Creatures of the chosen colour get plus one plus one. And whenever I tap a land for mana, it produces an additional mana. So yeah, K Sun is just one of those artifacts you always use. It's just like Jet Medallion, the cards that you only use in monocolor decks. Uh, for the last basic artifact, I am running a Bolus's Citadel. So you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast spells. I'm sorry. Uh, you may play the top card of your library. You may cast spells this way by this way. Uh, pay life equal to its converted mana cost, rather than pay its mana cost. So if I look at top card, oh, it's a it's a five mana card. Okay, I will pay five life and cast it from the top of my library. Uh, another thing I haven't had the chance of doing just yet is the last ability, which you sack ten permanents, you you tap this, and it deals ten damage to each opponent. I haven't yet done that. 
I've so far only focused on the casting spells on top of my library. Nicely enough, you can also play... Because it says you may play, like, top card, it means you can also play a land if you haven't drawn into a land, which is really nice. Especially since Mono Black doesn't really have that way... many ways... I say many ways, it doesn't really have ways of searching mana. So yeah, really, really nice. Uh, and then I am actually running three equipments. Uh, first being the busted equipment, probably the most busted equipment in the deck, being Sting, Glittering Dagger. The equipped creature gets plus one plus one and has haste. So if Malnar is on the battlefield, I can pay two, cast it, pay two to then equip. Now it's now a three four with haste, so I can tap it. At the beginning of each combat, untap equipped creature so I've uh, tapped it I use his ability during my turn okay now goes my opponent's turn they go through the steps and go into their combat Malinar untaps which then gives you a chance to tap it during their turn to create more 1-1 one -one black rats and if you're in, and then commander because they're multiple opponents you, uh, yeah, you can get this off so many times and then he becomes an issue. Which, if he does become an issue for the table and they want to target him, I do have Swifties. I was debate. I did try out with Lightning Greaves, but Lightning Greaves just kind of hindered me because of my Mage White Stone and my um, a Thousand Year Elixir. Because I needed to target my creature to untap him and Shroud says neither player can target this creature. So yeah, I took that out for Swifties. Which is sure, I have to pay the extra mana, but in this deck, that's fine. I have, I've got lots of floating mana in this deck. And then the last equipment is the uh, Skull Clamp. Simple enough. Equip creature dies, draw two. And because Rat Colonies only have one toughness, and the equipped creature does get neg one, neg one. Uh, sorry, plus one, neg one. It will just die, so I instantly just keep drawing a card. The same with my 1-1 one, one Black Rat tokens. Now for the instances. So, we're running a Dark Ritual because, hey, first turn having this in hand. I've got mana, I can cast any, I can potentially cast any card in my hand. Uh, Deadly Dispute, additional cost, you stack Creature or Artifact. So you could sacrifice like the 1-1 one, one black rat tokens, or if you really want to, a rat colony, to uh, draw two and then create a treasure token. Village rights, again, sack creature to draw two. And then when we have like so many creatures, uh, Foul Tongue Shriek. Target opponent loses one life for each attacking creature you control, because this is a swarm deck. You're going to have a lot of creatures that are going to be attacking. So paying one mana to the old target opponent. Even, it might not even be the opponent you're attacking. It could just be an opponent that you're not attacked into yet. This can do a lot of damage if you like. If you've been able to get like 40, 40 attacking creatures. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's pretty much game over if your opponent hasn't gained that much life. An In Infernal Grasp, destroy a target creature, you lose two life. Defile. Defile is amazing because it, the target creature gets a neg one neg one for each swampy control. And because I'm running like, what? Above, what, 20 something, I think? Above 20, maybe 26 or 28 basic swamps. So yeah, whatever creature. And it's perfect because neg one neg one gets around indestructible creatures. Which is really, really good. I'm starting to like mono decks more and more because, yes, I do have a couple free color decks. I've got my knights, I've got Urza. Free colors is probably the max I'm ever going to play again. I didn't enjoy Wolberg, I didn't really enjoy 4 mana. Free mana is probably my, probably my limits. But I have been enjoying mono decks more and more. So, then we shall go to the sorcery. So, we're running mono black, and why not run a demonic tutor? Search your deck for a card out of your hand. So this can get me some of the key cards in the deck. 
uh, Sign and Blood. Target player draws two and loses two life. I've actually used this card, I've probably mentioned it. I've used this card to kill an, a, pl a player because their life was two. So they draw two and instantly lost. Which was actually pretty insane and big brain play right there. So next. Feed the Swarm, destroy target enchantment or creature. Uh, you lose life to its convert amount cost. Now, to my knowledge, this is the only real black card that deals with an enchantment since black doesn't really have that much leeway of destroying. It does have a lot of destroy target permits, but it doesn't have that much of uh, enchantment removal. So, having a two mana card that instantly dis that can destroy a enchantment is pretty good. Unknowingly, it's a sorcery, so it is a little bit slow, but I think it's fine. Then uh, to help out with uh, kind of swarming the board, this card you might not want to run it, but I run it because it it help it's a uh, it's like um a, a win you win the game if you have like more life than your opponents and you have like uh, Iora first lock wayne. We have Plague of Vermin. Starting with you, each player may pay an amount of life. Repeat this process until no one pays life. Each player puts a 1-1 black rat creature token into play for each uh, into play for each one life he or she paid this way. So yeah, if everyone's been taking some chunk damage, I've been able to life gain some. I create uh, 20. I pay 20 and gain 20. And because I gain and 20 black 1-1 one, one black rat in the battlefield and I have this, each opponent loses 20 life. If everyone has, well everyone loses 20, I gain 20. So this potentially could win me the game. Or it gets everyone just inside that, you know we're all going to go for it. And I'm gonna, in response to this card, I'm gonna kill Iora, which happens, which is fine. I'll just pay a few mana to get some 1 1 black rats, because then I might be able to cast Malnar to, uh, to make more. So it's okay. Uh, to, and also, to kind of, um, to my opponents to lose more life, we have a uh, gruesome fate. Each opponent loses one life for each creature I control. Really, really huge, especially since I can swarm the board with a lot of rats. Next we have Exangrenate. Pretty sure I said that wrong, but you may pay 2 black and X. Each player loses X life. You gain that much life lost. So, say I spent uh, 10 into X and there's 3 other players. Each of my opponents will lose X life, and I would actually gain 30 life, because it doesn't say you gain X life, you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Which I'm pretty sure it's like 30, because each opponent loses 10 life. I think that's how it works, if I'm wrong, um, let me know in the comments. But it, because I am using the old wording, it probably changed on new printings maybe. But even then, if I'm gaining 10 life, I'm still happy with gaining 10 life. For the two really big reasons why I have 27 rat colonies. Secret Salvage. Exile a non-land permanent from your graveyard. You may search your library for, for, for any number of cards that share the same name and put them into my hand. You might be thinking, okay, so you're... So you're exiling one rat to gain, well one rat eye to gain all the rat cards in your deck. Yes. Even though I have to discard them during the end of turn because I don't know if I even have, I don't think I've got a Linkry Tower in here. So I have no ways of limited hand size. Um, which is fine because I want them in the bin. Because I actually won this card. Uh, a lot of players don't like this card because it also helps your opponents if your opponents are also running a tribal deck. But if I have all my cards to say when a creature ends the battlefield, you lose a life. 
Like, I'm, I'm fine. Especially since I'm bringing back, like, maybe, like, 20-something rat colonies. Because, each player chooses a creature type. Each player returns all creatures of a type chosen this way from their graveyard to the battlefield. So, I get all of my rat colonies back. Which could either trigger Iora, or it allows me to use Groups of Fate. I think it's worth the risk, in my own opinion. I do think so. For the last sorcery, we won a Kindred Dominance for a... So, a board wipe, choose creature type, creatures that are not of the chosen type are destroyed, pretty much. So, everyone's creatures will die, all my rats will stay on the battlefield. Okay. Next we have um, enchantments. I only want like three... Three enchantments in the deck. So first, we're running Black Market because getting a mana, getting a black mana for, well, gaining a charge counter for every time a creature dies, pretty good because no matter if my creatures die, it also matters if my opponent's creatures die. Getting off your pre-combat main phase, you add one, you add a black for each charge counter on Black Market. If I got five charge counters, nice. I add 5 black to my mana pool. And what's really nice is I always thought this this card text said remove a charge counter to gain X like swamp. But no, the, the counters don't They don't remove themselves, they always stay on board, so you always have like that 5 mana floating. This card is really good and I'm surprised that it's actually extremely cheap now. And it got reprinted like uh, I think Boulder's Gate Commander. So yeah, that that's that's pretty insane. I know Black Market Connections is a thing, and that card was stupid, stupidly cheap when it came out, and now it's dumb expensive. It's like thirty until the Cavern Excellent Command Dex because it get reprinted in the Pyro one, which is kind of nuts. Uh, for the second enchantment, we are running a Phyraxian Arena to draw a card at beginning of my upkeep. I will lose a life, but it draws me a card. I'm more than happy losing a life to draw a card. And then for the last one, we're actually running Haunted One Background. So, uh, Commander creatures you own have whenever this creature becomes tapped. It and other creatures you control that shares a typing with it each get plus two plus zero and undying to the end turn. If you don't know what Undying is, if like I tap my Marrow and I if I tap Marrow to to then sack this to create X swarm of black rats. Because my commander is tapped, the, this card that I sacrificed will actually return to the battlefield with a 1-1 one -one counter. So I'm actually not losing anything. Sure if I sack a token, yeah I don't get it doesn't return because tokens fizzle when they leave the field. But yeah, being able to return like a rat colony that I've sacked to then gain more rats is really strong. I've been actually after one of these for the longest time. I just forget it was a thing. So now we actually get on to lands. This part is probably going to be the quickest part of the video because yeah, 34 lands. And one, two, three, four. Oh yeah. Okay, so I am running 28 basic lands because six of them are non-basic. So we have Cabal Stronghold. Taps for colors. Pay three mana. Tap it. Add one black for each swampy control. Pretty nice. Do you know what's better though? Cabal Coffers, which you pay two to add one black for each swampy control. Like. This is, this was money, but this is, oh, this is like a couple pennies. You know, there's only one mana difference. But yeah, having both of them is pretty nice because I will always have a bunch of mana to sink into like Exangrenade or other cards. Crypt of Agadim, which is really good because it does enter tapped, but it taps for black or you may pay to tap it and add a black to your mana pool. 
uh, for each black creature, and if I've got like 27 rack eyes in my bin, I've got 27 floating mana. And then we have Abandoned Mire. Um, it is a legendary land, a task for black, and it also has channel. So I play three colors and a black, discard it, mill three cards, then return a creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. This ability costs one cost less to activate for each legendary creature you control. Now, I actually don't ever use the channel. I never do. I really, I don't have that many legendary creatures, so I can't just put it on the battlefield as a land because it doesn't tap. It doesn't enter the battlefield tapped, so I just see this most of the time as oh look, a legendary swamp. And then we have Bajuka Bog and the Battle Tap, but when it does, it exiles the target opponent's graveyard, it then taps for black. For the last non basic land, we have Everglades. Enter the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, I return a non tapped swamp to my hand. It then taps for both a slap, uh, a slap for a black and a colorless. So you're getting two mana from this card. Which are more than worth. If it's, it's like early game, yeah. Turn one, play a swamp. Turn two, bounce a swamp, play this. I think that's fine. And then we have our 28. <laughs> 28 basic lands. Because, yeah, that, that's about it. You only need. There's not really much to say. It's a 28 basic lands. But yeah, that's... That is my Rat Marunar Commander. I'm going to be a little bit sad for when I swap the Commander out for the new Commander. It's going to be a little sad. But I know that if I ever want to build this again, I always have the cards. Because they always end up chilling in my binders for a while. <laughs> Like both of my really good cards. So yeah, hope everyone has enjoyed my little rat deck profile. As always, if you guys want to see more, then feel free to subscribe and hit that bell for so you can get notified for when I net upload new videos. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.